How do I look though? Is my hair cray cray? <laughs> no. Hey guys, I just thought I would stop in today because it's really important that I let you guys know how to maintain dreads and use a crochet hook. Ah, even though it's cold out here, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it quick. And I think you're going to be able to understand because this is important. I don't want you messing up your hair and not liking it. So let's get going. <sighs> Who you're going to see in these examples are my friends from a dread tour in Reno. And we are going to give you a little bit of a example with the macro lens on the details of the crochet hook. And luckily I even have um, this hair today. <laughs> because I'm missing a few extensions in my hair. Don't know if you can tell my bangs. So I just wanted to show you the very beginning since I'm not gonna show this in the other footage and I can even do it with my gloves on. And I like to do it with my knees and I like to twist twice all the way to the end, rip strategically, coaxing the rip. The more, the better. What we're trying to do is create a nest. And we do not want it to have a spine down the middle. We want it to be fluffy. So I'm gonna go and maybe do one more twist to the end and a strategic rip. By strategic, I mean, you're like working it and thinking like, where is this going? Where does it need to be tugged? And you can like work out every single knot. Okay, so this is the beginning of my dreadlock extension. Luckily, I happen to have my kit as well. And all I need is a comb and a hook. Vac comb thoughtfully. One, two, three, four, five, six. What I did is about when every half inch I tugged my knots thoughtfully with my back comb. And that's all I need for that now. And now the crochet. So what you're gonna do is try to create like a net around this mass with the fuzz. You're not trying to make a hardcore, hard, dense dreadlock. You are trying to just make this mass contained. And the more spongy and soft, the better. You're gonna slide it back behind it. You're gonna grab one or two or three of the little hairs that are on the side and pull it around. And then you're gonna come around, grab more hair, and bring it around and then you're going to twist the dread and do that again and you just want to try and continuously pull the little thread of hair on this side the left of the dread into the loop that you've created on the right and the twist just takes you to the other side of the dread and your goal is just to not lose the hair that you have just grabbed and if you do it's okay grab it again sometimes you'll want to move your fingers around to hold it better but the faster it doesn't need to be perfect you're just trying to like lock dreaded lock it in and then once you feel like you have a few you're gonna pull that all the way through twist it and then I like to just kind of like sort of like haphazardly tie a knot and then that's like that's the beginning of your dreadlock. But if you're doing this on someone's head, you need to remember to let go of the twist eventually because it's going to hurt. So what you need to do is make sure to grab only a couple of hairs so that it's like a thread, threads that are sewing around. If you grab big chunks of hair with your, with your needle, it's less likely to mature because you've got bigger chunks of hair just wrapped around each other instead of like knots that are just like being held and maintained and secured. Slide your hook behind, maybe through the dread just a little, but not through the center of the dread because we're trying to create a net, a basket around it. So start with the hook on the back of the dread, opening of the hook facing you, slide it behind, grab a little piece of hair, bring it around, twisting the dread, and doing that again. And maintenance on the roots, what you need to do, let's go over here out of the light. 
When you're maintaining roots, depending on the amount of growth and how thick the hair is, you may need to back comb the root a little bit and then do the same thing I just showed you where you bring the fuzz in around a cage, around the knot, the ratting with the hook and then it just becomes a dreadlock again. Sometimes you don't even need the back comb and you can just bring the loose hair into the dread. I hope that you grasp the concept of the threads, the cage, the mass. The more spongy, the more it can mature on its own and become more like a dreadlock instead of like a twist. And if you're having a problem where you have a lot of twists and you see mostly twists in your dreads, you're twisting it too much. Too many twists before the rip. Two twists and a tender rip. And um, good luck. Leave comments. I'll work to explain this better next time. But like I said, I was in a row. I don't know. Follow us on Instagram. Subscribe to our channel. And do all the fun things that make us feel good and make us want to make more YouTubes, like a thumbs up and a comment. And um, like, it's important for me that you guys enjoy your life, enjoy your dread journey. Oh, and use hashtag wired and stoned and dreaded so that we can see your beautiful faces, okay?